Hello, what do you know about Shakespeare? How many plays did he write? He's this great playwright, he's this great genius. There are hundreds of books with titles like The Genius of Shakespeare, things like that. We are going to look at the facts and figures a bit, and I happen to think he is the greatest experimenter in the history of theatre. He's one of the very greatest poets that ever wrote, and you probably didn't realise he was one of the big bestsellers of the 1590s as well. So what do we know? Well, one of the great things is we don't know a lot. He was born in 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon. He died in 1616 in Stratford-upon-Avon. And Stratford-upon-Avon has made an industry out of Shakespeare ever since. If you get the chance, you go to Stratford, you have a look around the historical sites, you'll see this bust of Shakespeare in the church. And that's the image that we tend to see of him. Slightly balding, uh, looks a bit sort of middle class, doesn't really look sort of theatrical. But, of course, he was the greatest playwright in the English language. At least we think he was. One of the things about Shakespeare is, as I suggested, that we don't know a lot. There is quite a current of opinion that doesn't think Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare. They think Marlowe wrote Shakespeare, or the Earl of Pembroke wrote Shakespeare, or Walter Raleigh wrote... There's quite a list of other contenders to be Shakespeare. And some really big figures in the Shakespeare industry, like Derek Jacobi and Mark Rylance, firmly believe Shakespeare was not this guy who was born in Stratford-upon-Avon. Others, like Stanley Wells, who is the great authority on Shakespeare at the moment, I, I believe Stanley very much, uh, Stanley Wells is one of the great writers on Shakespeare, and he more or less dismisses these others who say it wasn't Shakespeare. But part of the mythology is that we have his birth date and his death date as being 23rd of April, which is, of course, St George's Day, and that makes him sort of emblematically English. Shakespeare, to that extent, is a construct. It is, it's the sort of... He's the national poet. And that construct of Shakespeare, in many ways, has to be deconstructed if we want to look at him as a human being, a man who wrote plays, and a man who was a constant experimenter in the theatre and in other forms. Now, that's the big point I want to make. Shakespeare... Whoever he was, but I think he was William Shakespeare, born in Stratford-upon-Avon. He was a young actor. He started writing plays towards the end of the 1580s, when he was maybe, what, 23, 24. And we have, do you know how many? 37 plays that we know he wrote and quite a few others that we think he had a hand in because it was quite normal for playwrights at that time to collaborate, to chip in a scene or two, or to rework the works of somebody else. Much the same way as you get somebody in to help the script of a movie, or you have a writer's room, you have a team of writers. This whole idea of single authorship is not a prevalent idea at this time in the writing of plays in particular. So there is a group of plays called the Shakespeare Apocrypha, which may or may not have had contributions by Shakespeare. They can do computer analysis of the language and style and stuff nowadays. One play, Cardenio, has been kind of brought into the canon recently, which would mean the correct answer to the question, how many plays did Shakespeare write, would be 37 or 38. How many plays did he have a hand in? Ooh, over 40. How many plays are completely and utterly by Shakespeare as a single writer? Probably in the mid-30s. And therefore, if you count the years in which he was active, 
which is about 1590 to about 1612 or 13, count that, that's 22, 23 years, and way over 30 plays. Whew. The guy was working. He was working hard. And one of the fabulous things to do is to follow him through over the years and see the things he learned to do, the things that made him really rich and famous, and the final phases of his career when even his colleagues and contemporaries admired him as probably the best of them all. <laughs>